we now enter into the next portion of the general audience, we will hear the catechesis of our Holy Father. We're continuing the series on prayer, and today we focus on the Virgin Mary. Dear brothers and sisters, good morning. On our course of catechesis on prayer, today we meet the Virgin Mary as the prayerful woman. The Madonna prayed, used to pray. When the world still knew nothing of her, when she was a simple girl engaged to a man of the house of David, Mary prayed. We can imagine the young girl of Nazareth wrapped in silence in continual dialogue with God, who would soon entrust her with a mission. She is already full of grace and immaculate from the moment she was conceived, but she knows nothing yet of her surprising and extraordinary vocation and the stormy sea she will have to cross. One thing is certain. Mary belongs to a great host of the humble of heart, whom the official historians never include in their books, but with whom God prepared the coming of his son. Mary did not autonomously conduct her life. She waits for God to take the reins of her path and guide her where he wants. She is docile, and with her availability, she prepares the grand events in which God takes part in the world. The Catechism recalls her constant and caring presence in the benevolent design of the Father throughout the course of Jesus' life. Mary was praying when the Archangel Gabriel came to bring his message to her in Nazareth, her small yet immense Here I Am, which makes all of creation jump for joy at that moment, was preceded throughout salvation history by many other here I am's, by many trusting obediences, by many who were open to God's will. There is no better way to pray than to place oneself in an attitude of openness, with a heart open to God, Lord, what you want, when you want, and how you want. That is, a heart open to God's will. And God always responds. How many believers live their prayer like this? Those who are the most humble of heart pray like this, with humility, Essential, let's say it like this, with simple humility. Lord, what you want, when you want, and how you want. And they pray like this. They don't get upset when their days are filled with problems, but they go about facing reality and knowing that in humble love, in love offered in each situation, we become instruments of God's grace. Lord, what you want, when you want, and how you want. A simple prayer, but it's putting our lives in the hands of the Lord so that it might be he who guides us. All of us can pray like this, almost without words. Simply, Lord, what you want, when you want, and how you want. Prayer knows how to calm restlessness. We're very restless. We want things before we ask them. We want things right away, right away. And life isn't like this. This restlessness is bad for us. And prayer knows how to calm restlessness. It knows how to transform it into availability. I'm restless, I pray, and prayer opens my heart and makes me 
willing to do God's will, open to do God's will. In those few moments of the Annunciation, the Virgin Mary knew how to reject fear, even while sensing that her yes would bring her tremendously difficult trials. If in prayer we understand that each day given by God is a call, then our hearts will widen and we will accept everything. We will learn how to say, what you want, Lord, promise me only that you will be present every step of my way. This is what's important, to ask the Lord for his presence on every step of our way, that he might leave us, he might not leave us alone, that he won't abandon us in temptation, that he will not abandon us in the most awful moments. And this is what the Our Father, the prayer of the Our Father, this is what Jesus asked us or taught us to pray to his Father. Mary accompanied Jesus' entire life in prayer right up to his death and resurrection, and in the end she accompanied the first steps of the nascent church. Mary prayed with the disciples who had witnessed the scandal of the cross. She prayed with Peter, who had succumbed to fear and cried for remorse. Mary was there in the midst, she was there with the disciples in the midst of the men and women whom her son had called to form his community. Mary didn't do what a priest would do, no, it was Mary, the mother of Jesus, who prayed with them in community. As one member of the community, she prayed with them and prayed for them. And once again, her prayer proceeds into the future what was about to be fulfilled by the work of the Holy Spirit, by the work of the Holy Spirit, she became the mother of God, and the work of the Holy Spirit, she became the mother of the church, and she accompanied the apostles on the first steps in the church in silence, always silently. Mary's prayer is silent. The Gospel tells us only about one prayer that Mary said at Cana when she asked her son uh, to help the couple who were about to make a horrible impression of themselves before their friends. There's, there's a wedding and, and it's going to end with milk because there's no wine. Imagine that. And she prays and she leaves it to Jesus to resolve the problem. And then we don't know, um, it's not recorded or we don't know, but her presence is always a prayer and her presence among the disciples in the Senegal, awaiting the Holy Spirit, that was in prayer. And thus Mary gave birth to the church. This is how she's the mother of the church. The Catechism explains, in the faith of his humble handmaid, the gift of God, that is the Holy Spirit, found the acceptance he had awaited from the beginning of time. In the Virgin Mary, natural feminine intuition is exalted by her most singular union with God in prayer. This is why, reading the Gospel, we note that she seems to disappear at times, only to reappear for crucial moments. She was open to God's voice that guided her heart and her steps where her presence was needed. Her silent, the, her silent presence as mother and as disciple. Mary is present because she's mother, but she's also present because she's the first disciple, the one who, who learned in an exemplary way or better than the others. She didn't say, oh, come to me and I'll resolve the problems. No, go to him, always with her finger pointed to Jesus. This is what a disciple does, and she is the first disciple. She prays as mother and she prays as a disciple. 
Maria custodiva tutte queste cose meditandole nel suo cuore. Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Thus, the evangelist Luke depicts the mother of the Lord in the infancy narrative in his gospel. Everything that happens around her ends up being reflected on in the depths of her heart, the days filled with joy, as well as the darkest moments when even she struggles to understand by which roads the redemption must pass. Everything ends up in her heart so that it might pass through the sieve of prayer and be transfigured by it, whether it be the gifts of the Magi or the flight into Egypt until that terrible Passion Friday. The mother keeps everything and brings it to her dialogue with God. Someone has compared Mary's heart to a pearl of incomparable splendor, formed and smoothed by patient acceptance of God's will through the mysteries of Jesus meditated on in prayer. How beautiful it would be if we too could be a bit like our mother with our hearts open to God's word, with silent hearts, with obedient hearts, with a heart that knows how to receive the word of God and allow itself to grow as a seed for the good of the church. Thank you.